Today I want to talk to you guys about Dragon Ball Super Superhero. I just saw the film and I gotta be honest, it might just be my favorite Dragon Ball movie of all time. It's, it's that good. But before we get into it, let me kind of just lay some things out there real quick. I'm not gonna go into any heavy, like, story beat spoilers. I'm gonna stay far away from those and just due to the nature of the video, we will be getting into some spoilers, but I'll try my best to keep it to stuff that's in promotional material and stuff that's pretty already widely known. But if you're looking to stay on the safe side, if you're looking to go ahead and go into the movie completely fresh, then, you know, save this video till after you've already seen it, because it will have some spoilers. We're also gonna have some Dragon Ball fighters in the background, because I don't want to get hit by copyright. Okay. So the very first thing I want to talk about is the animation in this film. Something that a lot of people were hung up on when we got the initial reveal for the film. And I was hung up on it as well because you figure back then all we had to kind of gauge this with was the CGI in the Broly fight in the previous movie and the CGI in the Beerus fight. Both of which were a little bit jarring and didn't look quite the best. They weren't bad, but they certainly didn't really look as good as the actual animation throughout the rest of those films. So at least when I saw the initial premiere, I was like, yo, the art style looks nice. The art style looks dope. I like it, but I don't know if it's gonna work well for the entire movie because, well, it didn't really look all that great in the Broly movie or in the Beerus movie. And I'm glad to say that is not at all an issue. The animation in this film is beautiful. It's gorgeous. I, I love every bit of it. And to be honest, I wouldn't mind if this is how it always looked for Dragon Ball Super and subsequent movies. And part of the reason why I say that is because this movie did a great job in showing character emotions. Now, obviously, you know, the movie has a dedicated budget specifically for the entire movie as to where the anime, you know, with Dragon Ball Super has a reputation for not having the best animation, but they got to spread that budget out among episodes. So let's not compare those two. Let's compare this movie to the previous movies that recently came out. This movie has animation leaps and bounds better than all the previous movies. The amount of emotions that characters were able to show, the little tiny micro gestures that they were doing, like, I'm, I'm telling you guys, the body language these characters were showing in little tiny minute details was awesome. Seeing Pan kind of hop around the screen and, you know, do her thing and just be a kid was was a lot of fun. And seeing Gohan scare soldiers and, you know, just show his, his anger and all that was a blast. And Piccolo... I mean, the dude, the dude pretty much stole the show. I'm not, <laughs> I'm not gonna lie to you. But also, Gamma 1 and Gamma 2, I love those characters. I swear to you, if they become a staple in like future video games, so on and so forth, I would love it. I would love, absolutely love to have more of these characters. Now, even though this movie was a lighthearted film, it didn't shy away from going into like some more serious stuff. There was definitely some moments where things got tense and it got pretty like real for a second. And you could feel the tension, you know? It, it, was, it was good. They built that up really well. They found a nice balance between those happier, funnier moments versus those more tense moments. Like I remember there, there was a scene with Gotenks, which was one of my favorite scenes, where <laughs> if, if you've seen the promotional material, you know Goten and Trunks mess up the fusion and become fat Gotenks. And without spoiling too much, there's a scene where he really, really adds some very great comedic value to the actual fight itself, and, and it's one of my favorite scenes in the movie. I can't wait for you guys to watch it, because I, I have a feeling you're going to have a good laugh with it. But within that same exact fight, things get really tense. Like, the, the laughs kind of disappear, the laughs go away, and, and it's time to, you know, do business, and it, it gets pretty hardcore. I mean, that, that's pretty much all I can say without spoiling anything. It was a really entertaining fight. Also, it was really nice in order to see Android 21 make a little bit of a cameo. Now, it was, you know, like the human version of, like the original version of Android 21, the actual mortal, before she was recreated as an android, but that's still them acknowledging the character's existence within the overall arcing world. I don't want to go ahead and talk about what's canon and what's not. I mean, the movie's not even out in America as a recording this video, so I'd hate to have that conversation. It's nice in order to see them acknowledge a character from Dragon Ball Fighters and her commercial success in Dragon Ball Fighters and Xenoverse, and now being in this film, even if only a cameo, really looks bright for the character being in future iterations of whatever Dragon Ball decides to do be it video games, anime, manga, like, it, it stands to reason that they might be tempted to actually bring her as a more prominent figure, which I wouldn't mind at all whatsoever. Now, one of my favorite things about this film, period, was the relationship between Pan and Piccolo. We all know, you know, it's, a, it's like a Dragon Ball fan joke that Piccolo is Gohan's dad, and we really get to see that in this film with their bond, but also with how Piccolo treats Pan. And yeah, I'm glad to say that although Piccolo has, you know, grown a little soft over the years, he has no problems with putting Pan in her place. They, they have a fight scene where Pan's jumping around all over the place training with Piccolo, and without going into too much detail, he just disposes of her. He's just like, yeah, no, this isn't happening. And that, that that's it. Like, that's the fight. She's out of commission. And, and, and it was funny, you know, it, it was good to see those characters kind of interact in that way. 
showing us that like they have that kind of bond. For example, one of my favorite scenes and part of the reason why I love Pan so much in this movie and her relationship with Piccolo, which this will be a minor spoiler, it's nothing too too serious for the story, is Piccolo and Pan were in on the whole entire kidnapping thing right from the start. And it was kind of cool to see them work together in order to make Gohan think that she was actually in danger. Like she'd scream out for help and act like, like she was in danger and Gohan would get really upset and unlock more power as a result of it. And that was like the whole entire plan. The whole plan was in order to make Gohan stronger. I also really like how this character went out of its way in order to bring a lot of characters back into the limelight. You know, there's a scene with Dende, Yajirobe, and Corrin. Of course, they got Krillin in the film, they got Android 18 in the film, we saw them in the promotional material, and the scenes with Bulma are, are hilarious. Like, this movie overall, if I had to summarize everything in a nutshell, I would say it does a great job at the light-hearted energy that it brings to the table, while still giving us that more serious tone that Dragon Ball fights are known for. I also really love the fact that because we're dealing with Piccolo and Gohan, we're not dealing with, like, Broly and Goku and Vegeta levels of power. This approach really made things feel a lot more grounded. You know, we didn't have to worry about like a whole dimension getting destroyed over a single punch, which felt good. I liked that. And while Beerus, Whis, Vegeta, and Goku, and Brawly are in the film, they're not in there for that long. So if you're expecting like a, you know, a huge part of this film in order to have them in it, that's not going to be the case. And I don't think that's a bad thing. But that pretty much wraps up my non-spoilery thoughts about the film. Once the film is actually out in the United States, I'll make it like a proper review if you guys are down for it. But as of now, I think this is a good like non-spoilery preview into what I thought about the film. Let me know what you guys thought about it if you saw it. Now dudes, check this out. We upload every single day Dragon Ball Fighters videos, literally on a daily basis. So if you're new here, feel free to subscribe and check out these videos next. I'll catch you guys back here tomorrow. Thank you for watching.